So um, what I'm going to talk about is a little different than what the others have talked about. And I'm going to be talking specifically about New York and New York healthcare, which is really important to me, and I'm assuming is really important to all of you. So I want to start off with a question. And just yell it out. Let's get some energy. What are these? Yeah, yeah this is Cornell Medical School people, huh? So you've heard it over and over again. Um, healthcare is full of silos. And what we really need to do, and what I've learned over the years is, healthcare really is about collaboration, right? If we're gonna make any significant change, we've gotta work together. And so when I think about healthcare in general, I think about it's an ecosystem. And it includes all of the players, all of the you know, healthcare at this point is almost 20% of our economy. I think it's 17%. All of these people make up that 17%, and there are plenty that are missing from this graphic. But it's just important that in all conversations, when you're talking about any of the um, issues here today, that you be mindful of its impact across the ecosystem. So now New York. I would argue um, that New York is probably the greatest healthcare ecosystem, and that's what I've been talking about for the past 10 years. And why is that? Because we have it all. We have, obviously, some of the greatest providers known to man and woman um, and, um, in, in the country. We've got the payers. And, you'll under, and I put JP Morgan there specifically because employers are really important payers. And New York City is home to a lot of those important payers. We've got the life sciences, whether it's big pharma within the city or right around the city. And now we have a growing uh, biotech ecosystem, which I'm gonna talk about. We also have digital health, and we are the second leading uh, provider of digital health innovation, and I'll talk about that. And you notice MD Calc is on there. But finally, what really sets us apart from many of the other cities that you, or regions that you might think about vis-a-vis um, -vis healthcare, we have all of the money. We've got all of the investors, whether it's the bankers or private equity, VC, hedge funds, they are right here. And all of the advisors, and the advisors are really important because you need lawyers, you need your consultants, um, data analytics, uh, accounting, and many of them are headquartered right in New York. So when you think about healthcare, there really is no other place that is as robust as New York. And not only do we provide care, we actually provide a ton of jobs. So I looked at data from August 2016 these are the top 10 New York employers. Number one, I was just very, like American Airlines, number one, but all right, whatever. Um, but the, more importantly to this discussion, 50% of the top 10 are healthcare systems. So we provide this economy with a lot of jobs and a lot of money. And so that brings me to this organization that I co-founded called New York City Health Business Leaders. Our mission um, is really dedicated to, to building an ecosystem in New York that brings together all of the sectors and that brings together really good content minds to discuss important issues that ultimately lead to innovation. So how did this all come about? Um, many people ask me, you know, where'd you get this crazy idea? Well, if you knew me, um, I started another organization similar to this at Harvard Business School. I graduated there a long time ago, like 22 years ago. And as a student there, wanting to be in healthcare, I was not, you know, there weren't a whole lot of us. And so I had to mine the alumni database to find a job because, believe me, they were not coming onto the HBS campus. But through mining the database, what I saw was there were tremendous um, leaders in the healthcare industry on the business side, right? Um, and I was just like, I was really surprised that we had people in every single sector. And so I came up with this idea 
crazy to create a healthcare alumni association. There was absolutely zero support for it at the business school, but I persevered, and it's now the third largest alumni association at HBS. And what I found through that is it really was important that it be cross-sector, that everybody have a say, and everybody be brought to the table to give their opinion. And so when Ng, my co-founder, who's a doctor by training, an ER doctor by training, but um, is really an entrepreneur, she just sold her company, uh, called Context Matters to uh, uh, DRG, so she had a great exit. Um, what we decided was we were just really surprised and um, I, we, were, we were yearning for a place to get good information, good content on healthcare and the trends. And also we were yearning for other people, like smart people passionate about the industry who wanted to move things forward and talk about real issues. So in 2009, we put this, this organization together. And the idea really was not only you know, content, but also to increase the visibility of New York as a thriving center of innovation. And what we've learned is New York is, but it's, New York's also a really noisy place, right? We've got real estate, banking, arts, uh, theater, fashion, and healthcare is another industry. We know it's a really important industry, but it's, you know, largely it had been overlooked. So what makes it work? Um, I, I already talked about the network, um, the insights, and meaningful connections. And so when I talk about insights, these, uh, we run events uh, maybe six or seven times a year, but if you look at the topics, what we do is we try and uh, provide information on topics that are of interest to a broad variety of healthcare stakeholders and that touch them. Um, and that's important because when you're often in your silos, when you're in your day to day, you really don't get that information about kind of what the big trends are, like what's, you know, a lot of the information you're getting right here today. And so we're often the, the first to even surface issues. I know Deborah Estrin was here this morning. We were the first to introduce her to New York in a breakfast um, four years ago, talking about Cornell Tech and what they were gonna be doing in healthcare. Similarly on Precision Medicine, which is now called Precision Health, I understand. But Precision Medicine, for almost five years ago, we brought that topic to the forefront um, here in New York. And so the last important thing about it is, um, is about connections, right? We want to make sure that, that folks are, you know, um, understanding trends. But in order for an ecosystem to really work, you've got to connect people. It still comes down to people. They have to have relationships. And from those relationships, it's really important that people um, generate business. And we are in a business, right? Healthcare is a business in this country. And in order for us to be really thriving, We've got to have it all. We've got to have good content, good people, and a way to move our businesses forward. So the other thing I wanted to talk about today was where healthcare is going in New York. And there are really two, um, I mean, there are many industries, obviously, but there are two that are really, I think, on, the, um, on top, uh, top of mind for many of you. Obviously, today you've been talking a lot, we've been talking a lot about digital health. So as I said before, New York is number two in digital health. I think, yeah, we had um, already year to date 37 companies. And funding for the second year in a row has exceeded that in San Francisco. In fact, uh, as of third quarter, total funding for digital this year overall in the United States is nine billion, and that's just as of third quarter and that's 40% greater than last year at this time. So I would imagine that our number is gonna continue to grow. Now, why is it, why, you know, why is it in New York that we have become number two? Well, I would say there are a couple of reasons. No, number one, it doesn't require a lab space, right? Um, so you can start a digital health company in a fairly contained environment, and so you don't need the big, big, huge footprint. 
Number two, New York really does have a well-developed tech community. And that's been going on for years, since I was young, um, many years ago, in the, um, in the e-health days. It, today it's called digital health, it used to be called e-health, the early adopters. But our tech community overall is really pretty well established. Third is the ecosystem. We, ha you know, and we went through it. We've got payers, health systems, clinical trial operators, um, uh, payer, uh, yeah, payers, pharma, biotech, and with that comes a lot of problems, right? And in in healthcare, and what digital health is trying to do, hopefully, is solve problems. And so, I, as a result, we've had you know a really good run so far in the digital health space. And I also want to give credit to you know the early adopters and the the people who were planting the seeds for digital health in New York. And I think in any ecosystem, it's really important that you have this kind of group. First of all, Blueprint Health was one of the very early accelerators in the city and gave rise to several companies. Hit Lab is still around. It's up at Columbia. They do a lot of consulting around health technology. Junto Health, for those of you who don't know, is an outgrowth from Blueprint Health. And what they do is quarterly bring together stakeholders from, you know, from the payer world, provider world, pharma world, um, uh, services world, and finance world. And they come around and they focus on specific problems that exist within a hospital system or a payer. And they put working groups together to try and solve those problems. And so all of these, and th there's the Digital Health Innovation Lab, um, similar, um, the eHealth Collaborative, they are responsible for, you know, the shiny, the, and the, EM, the EHR and integration and getting that out there. And then finally, Startup Health um, and is an organization that both helps fund some companies, but also really helps promote them and expose them and expose all of digital health to the country. So when you're thinking about your own digital health future and whatever, I would definitely you know, look into these as resources. And so I love this slide um, because this is, I mean, New York really is a burgeoning center of, uh, of digital health. And it's really exciting to see the growth and the number of different companies looking at different problems. The one thing I would like to impart, um, particularly to the students and the doctors in the room, is if you're not involved in some way, make it a point. Make it a point to get involved because some of digital health is a cool solution in search of a real problem. And at, as my role at Columbia, I see a lot of uh, people come to me for advice on a number of issues. and. Somebody was in my office two weeks ago, you know, showing me this great new um, tool that he had built for patient data. Oh, and look, you know, this is where the doctor puts his or her information in. This is where the patient does it. This is where the pharmacy. And I'm like, hmm, have you spoken to a doctor? No. Have you spoken to a patient? No. So, you know, after he, whatever, he got the message. but. There are more of those types of applications than I, I think we'd all hope there to be. And so we need more providers to get engaged and involved in the entire process. Okay, so um, life sciences is the other big area um, for growth in New York City. And life sciences, um, Ha, has had a longer road, and why, yes, it is the lab space issue. It's the real estate issue. It's um, not enough lab space. And there have been many initiatives along the way to bring real biotech and you know innovation to the city. I kind of wanted to show you this because it's really interesting. 2004 um, at SUNY Downstate was the first biotech incubator. And we have a woman named Eva Kramer to thank for that. She's still at it. She's created another incubator, but she truly was a very early adopter. And companies have grown out of that. In 2007, Ale Alexandria 
took a bet on New York and built those gleaming towers right next to NYU. They built one, um, they now have two, and I think there's a third that's in the works. In 2009, Lilly um, was the first anchor tenant in, uh, in the Alexandria building, and that's important because that gives a sense of approval. When you get a, a tenant like Lilly in there, you know that you know, they mean business. Subsequently, Roche has moved in, Pfizer has moved in, as well as a bunch of smaller companies. 2010 Biobat, how many of you know what Biobat is? Right, okay. Well, it's uh, Brooklyn. It's uh, another um, incubator that Eva Kramer started. And it's, it's alive and there's a vaccine company in there. Um, and it's, you know, it's growing. To 2011, all right, and then 2013, the New York Genome Center. How many of you have been there? Yeah, oh great, okay. It's absolutely gorgeous and truly was, you know, pivotal, um, I think, in the next phase of biotech in this city. In 2015, the Life Sciences Fund was started by the, by the city and the partnership, actually the partnership from New York, and that's important because money is really critical. Investment is really critical if you're gonna get a biotech um, organization off the ground. 2016 is LifeSci New York, which I'll get to in a second. And then just recently, the New York Stem Cell Foundation um, opened new headquarters on the west side. And they've got tremendous lab space. They're also part of something now called the Hudson River uh, Park. You know, medical, there's a complex of um, labs and lab space over there. Similarly, on the east side, we see a growing, um, a growing number of uh, institutions, as some I've just shown you. And so this is why I really think that we are at a tipping point for, for biotech and life sciences here in the city. There have been many attempts, but I think, we're the, I think this is gonna be it. Life Sci New York City was formed by, uh, by the city. It's a $500 million initiative that was announced, um, I think, late last year or early this year. At, this, at the same time, because you know the mayor and governor had this, this spat all the time, so the, the pretty much the same week that we announced a $500 million initiative, the governor announced a $650 million initiative. So that's great. It's like the more money, the better. Um, but the idea behind Life Sign New York, of that $500 million, I would say about 80% is going towards real estate in terms of give, you know, giving tax abatements for greater um, lab space um, and building out its own um, incubators and accelerators and, and giving money um, or providing money and resources to um, developers that, you know, to help promote uh, the development of those um, institutions. But just as important to me is about 20% of the funding is going towards talent. And the thing you can't, the thing you have to have is for any ecosystem to um, excel is talent. You need the right people. And so you'll hear investors say over and over, well, you know, you can't get the great, you know, a great CEO to come to New York City. I don't buy it. I know that we have, or I mean, up at Columbia, we've got great talent um, on, the, on the PhD and the business side and the medical side. And there's really great talent throughout the city, but you do need to um, train, right, our future leaders. And so part of the funding is going towards that training, internships, um, and other kinds of um, ways to educate the next generation so that they are equipped to be able to work in the field. And so much like in digital health, acceleration is important. I would say it's probably even more important in the life sciences. And so, you know, I've already talked about, you know, some of, some of these organizations, but, you know, I need to give a shout out to Sam Sia at Harlem Biospace, which was one of the, you know, first incubators. Um, and he's a Columbia professor. He's now moving into the much bigger space, which is great. The Accelerator Corporation spun out two companies recently. And from uh, NYC, the Life Science Initiative, they just funded BioLabs at NYU Langone, 
as another incubator to, to help drive um, that innovation. And so when we think about life sciences and where things are going, you know, this is not, this is not as well developed, of course, as digital health and maybe not as well developed as certain other um, locations, but we're definitely on our way. And I think those of you who are in medicine um, and researchers uh, will only contribute to that as we go forward. So I know we were a little off time. I'm trying to get us back on. Um, I guess I, I just leave you with this. I'm really optimistic um, about healthcare, period. Uh, even after 20 some odd years, I'm still optimistic. And I'm really optimistic that those of us who are in New York and trying to do good things and create real value um, in the system are, are really gonna do it and that we will be rewarded for it. So thank you. Future of Care is New York City's premier community for healthcare innovation. To learn more, subscribe to our channel and visit our website at futureofcare.nyc.